Welcome to a new video about Bellwork Response filter design. In this example, we will discuss an active bandpass filter design having a Bellwork Response using a special algorithm which is called the GAFE algorithm. We will design a fourth order circuit having a multiple feedback circuit configuration as shown here. We will see step by step our calculation also verify these in SPICE simulations. Now before we dive into the actual design problem let's first discuss how we can create a band pass or a band stop filter so in general what you do is for the realization of these band pass filter on a band stop filter you can cascade in a simple case for the band pass a low pass filter in series with high pass filter that's cascading and that will then require some pass band frequency and some pass band gain so you can do that simply by connecting two filters in this case low pass and high pass in series and then you can generate your band pass filter that's possible when you have a simple design and you can also create your lower and the upper cutoff frequency that can be also done for the band stop filter there you use a low pass filter and a high pass filter in parallel and then again looking at the stop band frequency characteristics and also the pass band gain now that is then given by this so low pass and high pass in parallel and you create here your band stop filter it's also called the band reject filter and this is now the body plot for the game okay now what's the problem having these configurations like so by cascading or setting this parallel and creating the band pass and a band stop filters now if the cutoff frequency so the cutoff frequency is for the low and higher and also here the lower and higher cut frequencies are too close to each other for example this is one kilohertz and this is two kilohertz that is really too close so normally they need to be separated by one decade the final result will have a shift in the cutter frequency so for example if your low frequency low pass band has a cutter frequency of one kilohertz or let's say two kilohertz is better two kilohertz and high frequency high pass filter has a cutoff frequency of 1 kilohertz. Now you cascade that and you normalize, normally think that the pass band gain will be then just the gain here and the gain there, so the exact same as those two. And the cutoff frequency for the upper part will be just the cutoff frequency for the low pass and the lower cutoff frequency of the band pass filter will be then the cutoff frequency of the high pass filter. That is what you normally think. But these two cutoff frequencies combined together will then shift actually in the final design that's the problem of cascading they will have the same reasoning and same problem will exist for low pass and high pass filter in the parallel configuration at some point you can try out something and then uh, try to fine-tune your final design but can, can be quite tedious and some lengthy analysis and can be a trial and error and i call that most of the time trial and horror so what is a better method? The better method is using a algorithm, which is called in this case GAFI algorithm, to realize this band pass filter or band stop filter, and then having right away what you want as lower cutoff and the higher cutoff frequencies, and also the pass band gain. So the GAFI algorithm allows the designer to design a required band pass or band stop filter specification without the extensive mathematics, because we in order to convert your actual problem into the problem where you have a specific low and higher cutoff frequency that can be really tedious mathematics. A GAFI algorithm will give us some steps like a Coke book and we can just follow that and that will allow us to design our band pass and band stop filters. Okay, the disadvantage of this method or algorithm is that we lose the graphical view. So we don't have any idea where the poles are and the zeros are and how that will be shifted. That is something which is uh, happening under the hood, let's say. But the, the procedure is clear, so just follow that pre prescribed procedure and then you will have your design. This is the advantage of this algorithm. Okay, now what is a GAFI algorithm? What are the formulas? And again, these are not proved here, so I'm not going to drive this, but there are some formulas some calculation we need to carry out now we will see later what it all mean we have a, let's say a, this is just a parameter c and g here is the we will see that later is the band pass filter stage and it will create a pole here which has a real part and an imaginary part we will see that shortly 
And the other parameter here is D, which is then given by this formula, where you see here the Q of the bandpass filter, the quality factor of your bandpass filter. Again, you see here next calculation, E, so these are just parameters in our CAFE algorithm. And then also G. Again, the, the smaller the G here is a subscript, is the band stop filter stage. We will see that shortly. Now the quality factor here uh, for each stage is also calculated using this formula. So the Q of G means the specific quality factor for your bandpass filter stage. Next one is also the calculation of the K, which is the specific value in order to go to the center frequencies later. Now this is the next parameter, W, which is related to that KG. So you can actually see we go one by one to the parameters. And now the center frequency one is coming, which is then related to that WG with the center frequency of the actual uh, design. And we have also center frequency two, which is then given by this formula. You see actually two center frequencies are emerging from one center frequency and the WG. Okay, at this point, this doesn't make any sense, logical. We will just see that in the example shortly and how to calculate that numerically. So let's do that. So we have an objective. We like to design a better word response, active bandpass filter. The specifications are shown here. We like to have a maximum passband ripple, a max 1 dB. We would like to have a minimum stop band attenuation, 12 dB, a minimum. And effective midband gain should be 0 dB, so it should be a unity. The lower passband frequency, 2 kHz. Upper passband frequency must be 5 kHz. These are not the cutoff frequencies. These are the frequencies where you have the 1 dB lowering compared to the baseline of effective midband gain of 1. So that means at 2 kHz, I need a gain of minus 1. At 5 kHz, I also need a gain of minus 1. That's actually what it says. The lower stop band frequency uh, is 1 kHz. That means at this frequency, I need a minimum attenuation of 12 dB. And at 10 kHz, the other side, also this minimum stop band attenuation of 12 dB. So how do we work this out? Okay, let's look at those solutions. We start with the calculations. Now, step one is we look at the passband bandwidth, W bandwidth, and the center frequency, and also the quality effect from these two information. The passband bandwidth is just the difference between the upper and the lower passband frequencies. Now this is given here in omegas, so we can also do that 2 pi times the difference between these two, so that will be then 2 pi times 5 kilohertz minus the 2 kilohertz or 6000 pi radians per second. Now center frequency is the geometric mean of the upper and the lower passband frequency, and that is given by this expression. You just calculate that out and you will get here this 19,869 radians per second. Now, taking this together, we can now calculate our quality factor, which is the center frequency over the passband bandwidth, which gives us here 1.0541. Okay, that was step one. Going now to the normalized passband frequency and the normalized stop band frequency of our prototype low pass filter. We start with the low pass filter first and then convert that to the low, uh, band pass filter in order to get to our final design. The normalized bass band frequency is given by this expression. You see here again the difference as we have uh, calculated here, divided by the bandwidth. Now that is of course just one. This is normally always the case. The stop band, normalized stop band frequency is given by this expression. You now use the upper and the lower stop band frequencies and that will give you as the value three. Okay. That was step two. Step three is now we can calculate the filter order N of our prototype low pass filter. Now the A max and A minimum are related to the epsilon P and epsilon S. Epsilon P calculated from A max using this. So we have one dB. You just substitute in this formula, you get 0 0.5088. Similar for the epsilon S, you calculate using the A minimum. It will give us here 0. Point, I mean 3.8534. Taking this all together and put it in the formula for the Butterworth response filter uh, order formula, you can now use this. And we have already calculated the normalized pass band frequency and the normalized stop band frequency. And you have here the 1.8428 as our result. Now we need to use integer values for our order. So we need to have a second order 
prototype low pass filter. Okay. Now we now go to the step four that will determine the normalized butterboard poles of the prototype low pass filter. So we need to determine the poles of our low pass filter. The normalized butterboard poles are given by this formula. We see here the poles given by the exponential expression, which J here, and we also see the K, which is the number of the pole, and also the in index N, which is the order in this case too. Now we can write down now, as shown here, so we can, instead of using e to the power J this argument, we can divide it in the real part and the imaginary part using Euler's formula. Okay, now we can here, as said before, use the k as the pole number and n is equal to 2, in our case, the filter order. So for a second order, n is 2, we have one complex conjugate pole pair. So we have two poles. So these two poles are then given by this expression where you already can substitute for n, the 2 here, which will be then 4. Also here, 4, this will be then 2 minus 1, will be just 1. And we also have here 2 minus 1 will be 1. That's actually all shown here. Now, for k is 1, we just substitute here for k is 1, that will be then for p1, you get this expression. And for k is 2, for p2, you get this expression, as you just actually shown here, 2 times 1, and then the next one, 2 times 2. That's shown here, and it will result in this expression for the first pole, pole 1, and for pole 2, we have this expression. You see directly that the pole 1 is the complex conjugate of the pole 2, or the other way around. It doesn't matter how you say it. So we can already say that the pole 1 and 2 are given by this expression, where you have the exact same real part, but they have the imaginary part positive and negative. Okay. Now taking this together and going to the next step, step 5, we now go to the normalized cutoff frequency of our prototype filter. The normalized cutoff frequency is given by this expression where you see the pass band, uh, normalized pass band frequency and also the epsilon p we have determined. Now we know that it was 1, so normalized pass band uh, frequency. We also know our epsilon p, we also know our order, so this will result in 1.4019. Step 6 is the scaled butterboard poles. So we have already our normalized butterboard poles, but now we need to go to the scaled butterboard poles of the prototype low pass filter. So for that we need to use the cutoff frequency, which is calculated, normalized cutoff frequency, and also the poles we have calculated here. Then we have the pk hat, so that scaled butterboard poles. And again for k1 and k2 we can calculate that just Take this expression for the two poles, multiply it by the omega c, so the capital letter omega c. That's shown here. And then we'll be then, we have then the poles as scaled versions for our Butterworth poles. Okay. Now, taking this together, these are now important uh, values. And these are the center frequency and the uh, quality factor we also have determined earlier. Step five is now we can come up to the actual assign or the algorithm of the GAFE. So we assign the poles of the GAFE by assigning a new parameter P sub G. Okay, so the real part and the imaginary part of each pole will be assigned to the GAFE pole parameters which forms the GAFE pole. What does it mean? Now the GAFE pole given by P sub G are given by this expression. You see here the capital letter uh, sigma and the capital letter omega, where the capital letter sigma is the real part of the GAFE pole and the capital letter omega is the imaginary part of the GAFE pole. The index G, as said before, is the stage number of the final bandpass filter. So if you have, let's say, three stages, you have then G1, G2, and G3. Since we have two poles, we will have two stages. If you have uh, let's say more poles, you will have more stages. Okay, each stage forms a second order filter. Therefore, the final bandpass filter will have a two stage times a second order is fourth order. So, if you have a third order prototype low pass filter, they will give you a sixth order bandpass filter. So, the bandpass filter stage one, G is equal to one, is then created from the complex poles P1 hat 
which is then given by this. You see here that you have a capital letter F, uh, sigma 1, which is taking from here. So we take actually the uh, re imaginary value, I mean the real value of our pole without this negative value. And then the, sig the omega 1 is then the imaginary value from the first pole. In a similar case, for the bandpass filter stage 2, G2, you take now the P2 hat, you again look at the expression here, again ignoring the negative sign of the real part of the pole, that will be then our sigma 2, capital letter sigma 2, and then the capital letter omega 2 will be then also this one with the minus sign. Now we have our poles for our GAFA, in this case, for each bandpass filter stage. Now the GAFA parameters for each bandpass filter stage can then be calculated. We have seen those formulas in the uh, introduction. So since the poles P1 hat and the P2 hat form a conjugate complex poles pair, we can calculate the GAFA parameter for both poles and they will be equal. And the quality factor resulted from each complex pole is also equal. And the only difference is really the center frequency. Now the calculation goes as follows. Let's do that. First, the stage one. Now we look at the C1. We have seen this uh, formula already before. You look at the capital letter sigma one and the capital letter omega one. So you actually take it from here. You just substitute that in here and you get here this value. This is just a parameter we will use later. Now we have also the D1, which is related to that sigma one again, the capital letter sigma one, and also our quality factor we have determined already. This is 1.0541. And this will result in a D1 of 1.8808. E1, which is again, we are still in the stage one, is given by this because we already have the C1. We can just substitute it here. We will know the quality factor that will give us this value for E1. G1 is related to that E1 and also the D1. So also that is needed in order to calculate that. That will give you this value. And the quality factor for this stage is given by this expression. We have our E1 and G1 from the previous calculations. So this will then result in a Q1 of 1.1973. Now moving on to the other one, K1 given by this expression, which is this. And also W1, we have here the result as shown here, so 1.64. Now we can calculate the center frequency 1 using the W1 and that will result in uh, 32,654 radians per second. Okay, next one is about the stage 2, but this is really similar to stage 1. The only difference is really the center frequency. So the quality factor of the second stage is equal to the quality factor of the first stage, so that's exactly the same. And we have also the W2 is equal to W1, so it's also the same. And the frequency 2, as said before, is then equal to this one. You see that this center frequency is different than the center frequency 1. Okay, let's now summarize the bandpass filter stage 1 and the bandpass filter stage 2. You see the quality factor is exactly the same, only the center frequencies are different. So this is the summary again in a table form, stage 1, stage 2, each of them the quality factor and the center frequencies. And G here as the filter stage. Okay. Next one is a total mid-band gain. The gain of the bandpass filter at center frequency is called the mid-band gain. Now we need an effective mid-band gain later of 0 dB, that is for later discussion. So we need to have first the calculation of the total mid-band gain. Each, for each bandpass filter stage, we need to calculate its associated mid-band gain. That is given by the capital letter A sub M and the G for the stage. And that is given by this formula. You see here the quality factor for that specific stage. You see the center frequency for that specific stage. We also see the center frequency of what we have calculated before. So, now the total mid-band gain AM of the bandpass filter is then given by this expression, which is the uh, product of the separate stages. So if you have two stages, then G1, G, we have G is one, and then G is two, and you multiply those together, and you have your total mid-band gain. And here is the end total number of bandpass filter stages. Then we have the following mid-band gains. Now for bandpass filter stage 1, G1, we can calculate that using this one. We know we need to use the Q1 because that's stage 1. 
and also the center free, uh, omega center one. So you just substitute it from here, you can calculate that. And in a similar form, you can also calculate that for stage two. Now, when you do that for stage one, you have this, you see here the quality factor, the quality factor is in here, the omega center. In a similar form for stage two, we will, do, we will do shortly, they will result in AM1, so the mid band gain of first stage will be 1.8006. And here you see here that we use a different center frequency, but the interesting thing is the AM2 is also equal to AM1, so also the same. So this is la for later interesting and also to speed up and shorten the calculations that we know that the mid-band gain of the first stage is equal to the mid-band gain of the second stage. So the total mid-band gain is just a product of these two. So that will end up to 3.24 approximately or 10.22 dB. Okay, now let's bring everything here. And now look at the circuit realization. Now, we'll cascade two second order bandpass circuits, bandpass filter circuits, to create this fourth order bandpass filter. Now, for that, we will use this multiple feedback configuration. You see here the resistor R1 and R2. You see also what they are equal to. This is equal to the uh, magnitude scaling factor Km, and R2 is related to the magnitude scaling factor times the 4 times the Q squared, which is then the quality factor for specifically. You see also the C here and another C there. They are exact same. Okay. Now we can select the value for the C. So this is just a uh, value for C. And then for all stages, we just use C of 100 nanofarads. Now to calculate then the rest of the unknowns for each stage. Now the formulas for the denormalized component values are given by this. You see here the R1 that's actually here and the G is again the stage because we have two stages so we will have R11 that's for the first stage we will also have R12 which is for the second stage you also have here the magnitude scaling factor the quality factor etc again now the normalized component values for the bandpass filter stage 1 is then given by this so this is the summary you see the Q1 C1 which is of course this 100 nanofarads 10 to the power minus 7 the KF1, which is our frequency scaling factor, which is our center frequency, just from the table here. We also have the magnitude scaling factor that can be calculated from the choice of our C, because C is related to that magnitude scaling factor also. So we can calculate that, just rewrite this formula. You have this KM of 127.89. R11, which is from the first stage, is then because that's KM1, that is exact same as we have calculated here. And we have also the R21, which is here, that is just multiplied by 4 Q1 squared. And Q1 is the quality factor of the first bandpass filter stage. In a similar form for the bandpass filter stage 2. And these are the results. You see, again, the quality factor is the same, the capacitor is the same, but the center frequency is different. That's also why with the um, frequency scaling factor is different. That means also that the magnitude scaling factor of the second stage is different of the bandpass filter, which is now 345.41, not this 127.89. Then we'll also have this R12, which is for the second stage, and R22, which is also for the second stage. Now you see also the values here. Okay. Now in summary, we have these values for the stage 1, stage 2, R1, R2, and the C, the capacitor. The commands are the exact same, but the resistor will be different. Okay, now, now let's continue and look at what we need to do next. Now, since we know that we need an effective mid-band gain of 0 dB, that means 1, we need to also have some gain adjustment, adjustment circuits. Because our mid-band gain was in total 2 point, I mean 3.24 approximately, which is not 1, so we need to compensate for that. So the required effective mid-band gain is 1 or 0 dB and we have a total mid-band gain of this so we need to also compensate for that one. So how can we do that? We can use the voltage division using two resistors as shown here. So from point A to B we can use a division by simply going Ry over Rx plus Ry and that is the ratio we need to calculate. Now we, need, we know what Hm must be, that is 1. We know what AM is, we are already calculated here. Now we can now select the value, for example, RY, and then calculate RX. Now rewrite this and also express that here as shown here. 
and we can calculate Rx as given here and it will give us 2242 ohms approximately okay now we have now everything for our design and now final design will be this circuit which you see is a fourth order border response band pass filter and this is now the first stage which is a multiple feedback circuit second stage multiple feedback circuit and our edge innovation circuit in order to get to the effective mid-band gain of 0 dB. Otherwise, if you don't do this, you will have a mid-band gain of 3.24 we have calculated earlier. Okay, now let's move on and look at the simulation results. This is the body plot for the gain. You see here the circuit again. This is for this circuit. Now if we bring up the circuit here and look at the parameters in this body plot, you see here the effective mid-band gain is 0 dB and it happens at 3.14 kHz. That is the center frequency we have from our simulation and our center frequency from our calculation was 3.16 kHz. We're so very close actually, so this is a very nice result. And also the effective bandwidth, I mean the effective mid-band gain is 0 dB, so that's also as expected. We also see that the lower passband frequency, that means at 2 kilohertz is uh, producing minus 1 as the gain, which is our maximum passband ripple. So that's also fine. We also see that in the upper case, which is at 5 kilohertz, again a minus 1 dB. So they are also correct. The lower uh, stop band frequency, so at 1 kilohertz, we have a gain of minus 13.42. So that is at least 12 dB. So we need a minimum of 12 dB, so we go down by more than 12 dB, so this also according to specifications. The upper one, at 10 kHz, we see also minus 13.42, so we actually meet all the specifications for this bandpass filter design, so we can say everything is checked. Alright, we have discussed in our example about a Butterworth response bandpass filter design. We use a specific algorithm, which is called the GAFE algorithm, in order to have the lower and the upper Cutter frequency is the exact same as we have wanted in the final design. Because if you do this in the series combination or cascading, the low pass and the high pass filter, you will never get this done in the first time, right? You will need to tune 